very good evening to all of you and welcome to the news tonight. I'm Tracy Shilshi and I'll be getting you the day's top stories from India and across the world within the next 30 minutes. But first, let's get you the headlines. Uproar in both houses of parliament over Jammu and Kashmir Chief Minister's remark on assembly polls. Opposition stages a walkout. Modi government steers clear of controversy. Centre introduces bill to replace the coal ordinance in Lok Sabha today. BJD leads opposition to the bill to replace UPS version. Rift widens in the Aam Aadmi Party over bitter war of words over leaked letters. Yogendra Yadav and Prashant Bhushan could be reduced to non-active members. Congress takes first major steps towards rejigging party units across the country. Five new state chiefs named as clamour grows for Rahul Gandhi's elevation to the post of party president. And veteran cricket administrator Jagmohan Dalmia is back as BCCI chief, replaces N. Srinivasan unopposed. Anurag Thakur will be the new secretary. The top story, just a day after attending Mufti Mohammed Saeed swearing in, Prime Minister Modi seems to be distancing himself from the new Chief Minister of Jammu and Kashmir. Home Minister Rajnath Singh clarified in the Lok Sabha today that the Union government did not stand by Saeed's controversial remark. But the Congress still wants a statement from the Prime Minister. Here's more. Home Minister Rajnath Singh said in Lok Sabha on Monday that the BJP and the Union government distanced themselves from Mufti Muhammad Saeed's statement made on Sunday. In fact, Singh gave credit for the peaceful completion of polls in Jammu and Kashmir to the Election Commission, the Indian Army and the people of the state. The Home Minister also clarified that the Jammu and Kashmir Chief Minister and the Prime Minister had not spoken about the former's controversial remark. विशेष रूप से जो मुद्दा आज इस सदन में उठाया गया है इस मुद्दे के संबंध में मैं विश्वास के साथ ही नहीं कह रहा हूं बल्कि उनसे बातचीत करने के आधार पर जो हमारी जानकारी है उसके बाद मैं यह कह रहा हूं कि इस मुद्दे पर जो मुद्दा आज सदन में उठाया गया है इस संबंध में उनकी मुख्यमंत्री जम्मू काश्मीर के साथ कोई बातचीत नहीं हुई थी the Congress party demanded the Prime Minister's statement on the issue, saying that Mufti had discussed the issue with the Prime Minister. Our Pradhan Mantri ji yaha aana chahiye, aakar iske upar apni tippaniya kya hai, apni baat kya hai, wo sadan ke saamne rakhna chahiye. When this request was turned down, the members of Congress and Samajwadi party walked out of the house. Jo positive baat hai, saha hai. वो नहीं करके इसको क्या मुफ्ती ने क्या कहा? They recognise this institution of democracy. और और मैं कोई नहीं है। I don't want to, I don't want to come in. जो मैंने कह दिया है, यही कह दिया है। Stand by. सर बालिमेन इलेक्शन के मुकाबले में वायलेंस कम रहा। Door to door कैंपेन कम रही, पत्थरबाजी कम रही, जिसकी वजह से कई एरियाज में, जहां पिछली बार 1100 वोट पड़े थे, � या पाकिस्तान है या उनके जो एलिमेंट्स हैं कहीं ना कहीं वो भी समझते हैं कि जमुनी निजाम ही डेमोक्रेसी इस डी ओनली वे आउट कोई भी इश्यू रिजोल्व करने हो वो इसी के अंदर रिजोल्व हो सकते हैं। Meanwhile, Saeed has said that he stands by his statement. During his swearing in as the Chief Minister of Jammu and Kashmir, he had said that Hurriyat, Pakistan, and terrorists must be thanked for the peaceful conduct of polls in the state. With inputs from Sham Sundar, Bureau Report for Rajya Sabha TV. Well, Mufti Mohammad Saeed's controversial remarks on assembly polls came under sharp attack in Rajya Sabha as well. He had credited Pakistan for the peaceful polling in Jammu and Kashmir this year. The opposition termed his statement anti-national. Why you make such sweeping statements? The government faced a backlash in the upper house on Monday over Jammu and Kashmir Chief Minister Mufti Mohammad Saeed's statement on security during assembly polls this year. The remark triggered uproar in Parliament on Monday. Raising the issue during Zero Hour, Congress Shantaram Naik said Said's statement is a violation of oath of office as he showed allegiance to anti-national forces. The Chief Minister made a statement which is most controversial and which has hurt the nation. He said the elections were peaceful because of the forces Uspar. He indicated that is Pakistan. Uspar. Then, because of militants and because of Furiyat, he gave credit to these three persons for peaceful election in Jammu and Kashmir. 
JDU's KC Tyagi joined Shantaram Naik in slamming the government for side statement. समारोह में अपनी गर्मा में उपस्थिति के साथ विराजमान थे मुफ्ती साहब ओथ ले रहे थे उस समय मंच पर दो झंडे लगे हुए थे जम्मू कश्मीर की रियासत का और एक भारत राज का और इसी झंडे दो झंडे के खिलाफ इसी दो संविधान के खिलाफ इसी दो धाराओं के खिलाफ मुखर्जी साहब मार्च उन्नीस सौ में शहीद हुए थे मिनिस्टर ऑफ स्टेट फॉर पार्लियामेंट्री अफेयर मुख्तार अब्बास नकवी ट्राई टू सैल्वेज द सिचुएशन He asserted that the people of the state, security forces, and the election commission should be lauded for the peaceful polls. अगर किसी को क्रेडिट जाता है मानी उपसभापति महोदय, तो सबसे पहले जम्मू कश्मीर ले और करगिल की शानदार जनता को जाता है, जिसने देश की जमुरियत और देश के जमुरियत को के जाबाज जमुरियत को जो है वो मजबूती प्रदान की। उसके साथ जाता है चुनाव आयोग को, उसके साथ जाता है जो ह स्थानीय सुरक्षा बल है और केंद्रीय सुरक्षा बल जिन्होंने कि निष्पक्ष भयमुक्त माहौल में चुनाव कराने में मददगार रहे। Within hours of taking oath as the Prime Minister on Sunday, Mufti Muhammad Said said that the Hurriyat, the militant outfits, and people from across the border allowed conducive atmosphere for the state assembly elections held last year. Kriti Mishra's report for Rajya Sabha TV. In other news, a bill to replace an ordinance on the coal sector was introduced in Lok Sabha today. The bill was introduced amid opposition from the BJD. The Coal Mines Special Provisions Bill 2015 was introduced by Coal Minister Piyush Goel. While introducing the bill, Goel said the government was forced to bring an ordinance when the Supreme Court cancelled the allocation of certain coal blocks and issued directions with regard to them. The BJD opposed this bill with its leader Bhatru Hari Mehtab saying that the centre had taken certain subjective decisions on the issue. He also complained that his state, Odisha, has, was not in fact taken into confidence by the centre while deciding on regulated and non-regulated mines in the state. But Mehtab also clarified that his party was not against auctioning of the coal mines. The government had issued the Coal Mine Special Provisions Ordinance 2014 on the 21st of October last year, followed by the Coal Mine Special Provisions Ordinance in 2014 in December. The main purpose of these ordinances was to overcome acute shortage of coal in core sectors and ensure energy security. They facilitated the allocation of coal mines to steel, cement and power utilities, which are vital for development. Well, all's not well within the Aam Admi Party, as a bitter war of words over leaked letters has erupted between the party's founders. In fact, reports suggest that key leaders Yogendra Yadav and Prashant Bhushan could now be reduced to non-active members. The rift within Aam Admi Party has reached a boiling point with descending duo Yogendra Yadav and Prashant Bhushan weighing their options and a fresh war of words kicking off in social media on Monday. The party, which is firmly controlled by Arvind Kejriwal loyalists, has called for a meeting of its national executive on the 4th of March to take what could be make or break decisions. And after this conversation, it will be done in this situation how will the work of this party be done when the party of party of the 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 party of Arvind Kejriwal to target them and to remove them पार्टी की छवि को बार बार धूमिल करने का एक प्रयास कर रहे हैं तो इस तरह से पार्टी का काम कैसे चलेगा इस पर राष्ट्रीय कार्यकारिणी चार तारीख को मिलेगी और चर्चा करेगी फाउंडर मेंबर्स यादव एंड भूषण सीम टू बीन आइसोलेटेड विद फर्स्ट द लेटर्स बाय फॉर्मर क्वेश्चनिंग द आप्स डिसीजन मेकिंग एंड स्टाइल ऑफ पॉलिटिक्स एंड लेटर द बैटल स्पिलिंग ओवर इन सोशल मीडिया सैम्पल दिस ट्वीट बाय आशुतोष लीडर ऑफ द आम आदमी पार्टी द डिसाइसिव चर्निंग इन आप it's a clash of ideas between ultra-left who demand referendum in Kashmir and pragmatic politics of welfareism. The rift came out in the open after the party ombudsman Admiral Ramda sent a scathing letter to all three leaders expressing anguish over the growing divide and trust deficit between the senior leadership. At the heart of the division are allegations of lack of inner party democracy in decision making besides differences over whether the party should build on its success in Delhi and go national. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. In a major reshuffle in its state units, the Congress has appointed five new chiefs and one regional committee president. The changes have come at a time when the party's vice president, Rahul Gandhi, is on a two-week sabbatical in the midst of a crucial budget session. And there is strong speculation that he will soon take over as party president. 
More than nine months after a near wipeout in Lok Sabha elections, Congress has replaced five of its state chiefs and one regional unit president. The party has appointed Ajay Makan as the chief of its Delhi unit, despite failing to win even one seat in the recent assembly polls under his leadership. Former Maharashtra Chief Minister Ashok Chavan has been given the role to revive the party in the state. Sanjay Nirupam will be heading the Mumbai Regional Congress Committee. The party also picked Gulam Ahmed Mir in Jammu and Kashmir, Bharat Singh Solanki in Gujarat and Uttam Singh in Telangana as the new state chiefs. The new appointees have made their preferences clear at the outset. My top priority would be first of all to strengthen the organization and second is to play an effective role of an opposition party, of, of a vigilant opposition party. So these would be my two pronged strategy in Delhi. You can understand that Mumbai people Congress se be panah prem karti thi aur wo prem kahin na kahin kam ho gaya kahin na kahin unka vishwas hum mein toot gaya us vishwas ko fir se jeetna meanwhile senior leaders in the party have welcomed these changes in the state which are considered a precursor to a rejig in the party where a number of general secretaries are to be replaced well the changes were scheduled uh, many of them had uh, had been there for some time some of them had resigned so it's the right thing they all bear a stamp वो बहुत पुराने कांग्रेसी हैं और मिनिस्टर रहे हैं 12 साल से एमएलए रहे हैं कांग्रेस की पसंद की टीम बनी है राहुल जी और सोनिया जी का इसमें आदेश हुआ विद दिस रीशफल शोइंग अ क्लियर इंप्रिंट ऑफ राहुल गांधी स्ट्रेटजी फॉर द पार्टी द कोर्स ऑफ हिज एलिवेशन टू द पोस्ट ऑफ द पार्टी प्रेसिडेंट हैज गेन मोमेंटम वंस अगेन अब अप्रैल में एआईसीसी का सेशन है उसका इंतजार तो करना ही पड़ेगा हम तो उम्मीद यही करते हैं और हम चाहते भी हैं कि वो जल्दी से जल्दी प्रेसिडेंट बने यस आई एम वेरी ग्लैड दैट माय स्टेट वी हैव अ न्यू पीसीसी यंग मैन कॉल मिस्टर उत्तम कुमार रेड्डी एंड सो वी लुक फॉरवर्ड टू एक्टिव टाइम्स एंड गिव अ रन फॉर द मनी टू द केसीआर गवर्नमेंट सम मोस्ट स्टेट यूनिट चीफ्स आर लाइकली टू बी रिप्लेस्ड बिफोर द ऑल इंडिया कांग्रेस कमेटी सेशन नेक्स्ट मंथ विद नव विक्रम विशाल दहियास रिपोर्ट फॉर राज्यसभा टीवी quick break here but coming up next unseasonal rain and snow for two days crippled north parts of india we'll get you more details i rise to present the budget of the union for the year 2015-16 what's the fine print for the social sector what's been set aside in november 2000 what will be the implications the other is called what's the big picture on rajya sabha tv at 9:30 pm welcome back to the news tonight now in a more news two days of unseasonal rain crippled several parts of north india causing traffic snarls and water logging rains have also caused severe damage to standing crops the hills in north india experienced heavy snowfall as well leading to the closure of the shrinagar highway delhiites woke up to another rainy morning today as class 10th and 12th students were seen braving the rains and water logged roads to reach exam centers for the board examination it was the second consecutive day that rain accompanied by cold winds lashed the northern part of the country continuous rain also caused the mercury to plummet by several notches rain giving system hai wo low pressure system hai uska naam bola jata hai western disturbance ऐसा एक सिस्टम वेस्ट में डेवलप होकर ईस्ट में आकर कल परसों आया हमारा एरिया का नजदीक जैसा अफगानिस्तान और पाकिस्तान के आसपास आया था आज वो सिस्टम नाथ पाकिस्तान अजाइनिंग एरिया में स्थित है There was heavy snowfall too in the hill areas while the upper reaches of Jammu and Kashmir received snowfall the plains were lashed by intermittent rains The Jammu Srinagar highway has been closed due to heavy snowfall and landslides. Wintry conditions also prevailed in most parts of Himachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand with snowfall in several areas. The highway is closed since last night because of heavy downpour uh, of snow and rain everywhere and landslides. It is still closed. Even the southern region also witnessed heavy rain. Several parts of Telangana, Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka and some places in Maharashtra experienced the unseasonal rain. According to the Met Office, the sudden change in weather has been caused by western disturbances. 
It has also predicted moderate rainfall across the country today. Bureau report, Rajasabha TV. Meanwhile, swine flu has claimed 35 more lives as the nation nationwide death toll from the H1N1 virus reached 1,076 today. The number of positive cases has been inching towards a whopping 20,000 mark. Gujarat has pipped Rajasthan in terms of the number of deaths with 265 casualties. In Rajasthan, 261 people have died so far. With swine flu increasing in alarming proportions, Maharashtra Chief Minister Devendra Farnavis said all hospitals have been directed to provide free treatment to patients under its mission mode to contain the epidemic. Meanwhile, the centre maintains that the situation is under control. We get confused in this. There will be a little bit of pain, it will be a little bit of pain, and this can be swine flu, H1N1 virus also, it may not be. And with that, let's get you some more news from across the country in Nationwide. Foreign Secretary S. Jay Shankar is in Bangladesh on a day-long visit. This is the second leg of his visit to Sark Nations to firm up India's ties with member countries. He met Bangladesh Foreign Minister Abul Hassan Mahmud Ali to discuss bilateral relations. He will also meet Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina later today. He will also go to Pakistan tomorrow and from there he will be travelling to Afghanistan. Arun Singh will be the next envoy to the US. Singh is currently India's ambassador to France. The Indian government has informed the US in this regard. Singh will replace Jay Shankar, who earlier held the post. However, officials say the new shuffling will be done only after the Prime Minister Narendra Modi's proposed visit to Paris in April. Former Telecom Minister Dayani Dimaran and his brother Kalani Dimaran today appeared as accused before a special 2G court in connection with the SL Maxis deal case. The Maran brothers appeared before the court in pursuance to the summons issued against them and moved their separate bail pleas on which the court asked the CBI to respond to by the 16th of March. A Delhi court has granted bail to businessman Moin Akhtar Qureshi in a black money case. The case was filed by IT department for allegedly not disclosing his income of nearly 20 crore rupees. The court asked the meat exporter to play, pay a personal bond of 50,000 rupees and a surety of a similar amount. He has also been asked not to leave the country without the court's permission. It has fixed the case for 29th of April for recording of pre-charge evidence. International news now in North Korea fired two missiles today, vowing merciless retaliation against the joint military drills by the US and South Korea. The joint drills were denounced by North Korea as recklessly confrontational. The missile launches drew angry reactions from South Korea. China too called for restraint. Apparently anchored by the joint military drills by the US and South Korea, North Korea fired two short-range ballistic missiles into the Sea of Japan on Monday. North Korea called the military drills as a rehearsal for invasion. It warned of merciless strikes against South Korea. Japan strongly condemned the missile launches while China called for restraint from both sides. Meanwhile, the U.S. defended the joint military drills involving thousands of troops as defensive in nature. Earlier in 2013, the joint military exercises led to surge in tensions with North Korea, threatening defensive nuclear strikes and cutting a military hotline with the South. Bureau report, Rajasabha TV. A new ray of hope for Ukraine as U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry and Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov held talks in Switzerland to revive the shaky ceasefire truce. Following high-voltage talks, the U.S. hopes that the ceasefire deal will be implemented within hours. At the same time, Kerry wanted, warned Lavrov of further consequences if conditions of the truce were not met with. Meanwhile, Lavrov reported to the U.N. that there is tangible progress with the truce. Monitors of the OSCE said on the ground both warring sides are withdrawing heavy weapons from the front lines. However, during the last 24 hours, one Ukrainian serviceman was killed and four people were injured in the eastern border. 
And here I urge the Council, look at the facts. Do not allow yourselves to be misled. In Crimea and in the separatist control areas of eastern Ukraine, men, women and children are being killed. The world faces serious violations of human rights from discrimination and inequality to oppression and violent extremism. Our shared challenge is to do far more to keep these and other abuses from occurring in the first place. And here's more news from across the world in Global Buzz. Iraq has launched a major assault against the Islamic State to recapture the city of Tikrit towards the north of Baghdad. It's a major military operation backed by the Shiite militia in the Sunni-dominated Muslim province of Salahuddin. Ahead of the launch of the military operation, Iraqi Prime Minister Haider al abadi met officials in the province. He even offered an olive branch to all Sunni fighters offering pardon if they chose to abandon the IS. Tikrit lies 95 miles north of the capital Baghdad and was seized by the IS militants in June 2014. Police officers shot and killed a homeless man in downtown Los Angeles in the U.S. on Sunday in a dramatic confrontation that was caught on video. The incident happened during an altercation at a homeless camp in the city's Skid Row area. Police say three officers opened fire after the man tried to grab a gun from one of the officers. The victim was pronounced dead shortly after the encounter. A SpaceX Falcon rocket blasted off from Cape Canaveral in Florida on Sunday to put the world's first all-electric communication satellites into the orbit. It was the 16th launch for SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket. The satellites are designed to reach and maintain their orbits during lightweight all-electric engines rather than conventional chemical propulsion systems. And still to come, Dalmia returns as BCCI chief replacing Srinivasan. This is great white run of Kutch, particularly this patch of white desert which is extremely close to the end of park border, which is about 14-15 kilometers from here. Indo park borderline at a place where you do not blink. Border security force right at the westernmost point of India, rare and exclusive coverage of the Sir Creek zone. We are now slowly entering into the interior most parts of the Sir Creek area. And rare footage of world famous Flamingo City in ruins. Nature's fury, now a security risk. The most important isolation ki the uh, logistics to the troops which are deployed in the forward locations, also the floating BOPs. Watch a very exclusive episode of the National Security, Border Security Force, in the mysterious run of Kutch. <laughs> Let's get you some cricket news now, but this one's off the field. Veteran cricket administrator Jagmohan Dalmia was today elected as the new president of the BCCI unopposed. He replaced N. Srinivasan following a corruption scandal. This is the second term for the Cricket Association of Bengal president. Anurag Thakur, who was the joint secretary before, has now become the new secretary after edging out Sanjay Patil. Cricket Association of Bengal President Jagmohan Dalmia was unanimously elected as BCCI President at the annual general meeting in Chennai on Monday. The former ICC chief emerged as the front-runner amid backroom negotiations for votes. He was the consensus candidate among rival factions for BCCI President, a position he held a decade ago. His election was almost certain as he was the only candidate to file nomination. President Jagmohan Dalmia Joint Secretary Amitabh Chaudhary, Honorable Secretary Anurag Thakur, Vice President West Mathuj, Central CK Khanna Saab. Victory for the cleansing of cricket and the cricket to which we have we are waited and we want that these things should come with the entire flying colours. Srinivasan camp suffered a huge setback when rival factions Anurag Thakur beat Sanjay Patel for the post of secretary. Jharkhand Cricket Association Samitab Chaudhary was elected the joint secretary beating Goa's Chetan Desai belonging to the anti-Srinivasan faction. 
while Haryana's Anirudh Chaudhary won the treasurer's position by defeating Rajiv Shukla. We have gone through a lot. The reputation of the board is the most important thing for us. And all of us are very keen to work in the interest of the BCCI and in the interest of the game of cricket. I am very happy that Anurag Thakur, who is a very better cricket player, is now made a new BCCI. Dalmia's elevation was necessary after Srinivasan was forced to stay away from the election owing to a Supreme Court directive which reduced his role to merely voting. The AGM was delayed several times due to the legal battle that Srinivasan is fighting in the top court. The Supreme Court barred Srinivasan from standing as a candidate for BCCI chief following its probe into the IPL spot fixing scandal. Bureau report, Rajasabha TV. And finally, as the festival of Holy Nears, the birthplace of Lord Krishna Mathura is already reveling in colours. Devotees dressed as Radha and Krishna play Holi with flowers and one can also witness the traditional Latmar Holi where women beat men with sticks in all its glory. We leave you with these visuals.